Via Doom is finally over. Good news for folks in Seattle and even better news for the Washington Huskies. They are finally home after a four game road trip and they welcome in the Arizona State University Sun Devils for another Pac-12 matchup here on UWTV. I'm Michael Preston, Carolyn Farney, so good to be back. It's been a long, long time since we've been here. And Carolyn, Arizona State doesn't have too many offensive weapons in the cannon, but the one person they go to most is Ashley Castle. Ashley Castle is their outside hitter, and she by far gets the most sets for this team. So we can look for that tonight. And she's gonna have to pull out all the tricks against this Washington defense because they've got a really great block. So that means hitting high off this big block and also pulling in some change-ups too to try to get them off guard. Washington number one in blocks nationally. They average just about three and a half a set. So that means Arizona State's gonna have to maybe go two separate directions tonight and Erica Wilson certainly can carry that load for them. It's gonna be strategic for the Arizona State setter to really mix up the offense and they can do that with Erica while she's got such a great hitting percentage. So putting it in front of her behind, just really spreading out that Washington block could help them tonight. Bit of a rough road trip for the Huskies. They dropped three of four in the Bay Area and down in Oregon, losing to Cal, Stanford, and Oregon. So just kind of nice to be back at home in Seattle. Definitely, and from here on out, it's really about building the confidence of this Washington team. So Jim's gonna look for them to have composure and really be able to finish out these games. Speaking of composed, Summer Ross, just a freshman, arguably had the most consistent four matches of anyone on the team, further proving why she's just been so good this year. She has been steady Eddie for this team in some key areas like serve receive passing, setting up the block, but these last couple weekends she's been the glue for this offense. So I think the setter should set her more tonight and see what she can do. We talked a little bit about more confidence and one person who really needs it is Evan Sanders. Kind of an up and down season for the senior setter. What can we watch for tonight? See if she's having a consistent match. A key to know how well Evan's doing is how well her hitters are doing. So if we can see this Washington offense really get in rhythm and a lot of girls getting kills, we know that they're connecting with Evan well. A soggy, rainy, windy, stormy day here in Seattle. So snuggle up inside, turn the TV up. When we come back, it's set number one, the Huskies and Sun Devils from Alaska Airlines Arena. You're watching Husky Volleyball on UW-TV. Welcome back to Alaska Airlines Arena as ASU and UW are ready to go here. ASU has their lineup finished 
and Washington also waiting for their lineup to come out here. So for Arizona State, it goes Markanovich, Teslovich, McCready, Wilson, Castle, Mendeville, and Preach. Someone will check out for the libero on that one. And for Washington, Nogueres, Parker, Roland, Van Sant, Munoz, Ross, and Orlandini. So Evan Sanders is not going to start the game in for Washington as their setter. Probably see Gabby Parker come out of the match for Orlandini. The libero does come in, substitute for someone right away in the starting lineup. Once again, I'm Michael Preston. Directly to my right is Carolyn Farney. And Carolyn, uh, Arizona State comes into tonight just 5-16, and 1-11 and 11 overall. But we talked about this when Washington played Oregon State. You can't take anybody lightly in this conference at all. No one in this conference. And Washington is coming off of a really rough road trip, two weekends in a row, only winning one of those four matches. So tonight is really a step for them to just start building their composure back. Very, very tough road trip for Washington. They lost three of four, swept in the Bay Area by California and Stanford. Lost to Oregon as well, but they did manage to beat Oregon State. Actually set a school record, 17 and a half blocks in that match. That's a school record for a three set match. You need to mention that the record is higher for a four or five set match. The teams are lined up and facing each other. We are just moments away from volleyball here at Alaska Airlines Arena. See Coach Jim McLaughlin there going over to shake the hand of Arizona State's head coach, Jason Watson. In his 11th season now with the University of Washington. Teams are ready to go. The fight song is on. It's nice to be home again. It's really great to be home again. The crowd's starting to fill out in here. And one thing that this crowd's going to see coming in is a new lineup. We talked about Jenny coming out and starting setting. We can probably imagine they're going to run a 6-2, so running both the setters when they get in the back, or when they go in the front row, excuse me. Uh, he'll sub out the other one, and that's new for Jim. He hasn't, he hasn't run a 6-2 while he's been here. So Markanovich checks out for Arizona State for the libero. Preach. And for Washington, it will be Gabby Parker, as we thought. Arizona State will be first to serve here in set number one. Should also mention Washington's record, 10th ranked in the country right now. 16 and four overall, eight and four in conference play. And that three of those losses, as we mentioned, coming in the last two weekends. So Washington Love, a little bit of confidence back against the Arizona State Sun Devils. Teslovich is back to serve, taking a lot of bounces of that ball. And we are underway here at Alaska Airlines Arena. Setting up Summer Ross right away, but that one handled easily by Arizona State in the backcourt. And off the block, Castle with the first kill of the evening for the Sun Devils and the first point to get Arizona State on the scoreboard. One thing about Castle is she is an aggressive player. It's why she gets the most sets on this team, but she also has the most errors with that. So tonight, her swinging hard and being able to hit court is going to be really important. Orlandini not able to handle that one from Teslovich. Waiting to see the ruling on that one. It's a bad set, so no ace for Teslovich on that one, but Arizona State with an early 2-0 advantage. Here's the dog back with the calls of bounce on that one. Is Teslovich keen to do that? Nogueira is going to set up Munoz on the far side, handled easily. Castle again on the left side, right into the block. Bianca Roland and Summer Ross with the rejection. The Huskies haven't had the most picturesque season, but they are blocking better than any UW team has before. And like you had said in the open, the best in the country. 3.46% and another kill there for Arizona State. And no surprise, it comes from Ashley Castle. Two kills so far on three attacks, one error. And she is again the red shirt sophomore from Phoenix, Arizona. Nogueres to Roland in the middle. Handled by the Sun Devils and a little poke over. Nice play though from Nogueres to be there for that. And Van Sand gets her hand on the ball for the first time tonight. I was wondering when we were going to get to call her name. There she is again, far side. Good dig in the backcourt by Arizona State. And they'll be happy to push that one back over. Set back up. 
Roland gets up and gets down. How hard is that going up sideways and then to bring it down with that much force? And that's what Bianca does best, is this little backslide where she comes off of one foot and just sees the whole court. That arm just whips back down on the ball. There's Jenna Orlandini back to serve for Washington, the sophomore from La Cañada, California. Well, you see, there's more of that risk taking from Ashley Castle there. She was behind the 10 foot line and just tried to whack that right into the UW backcourt, but it flew out of play. Yeah, and so far for the Arizona State, they've said it six times, and five of those have been to Ashley Castle. So they are leaning on her heavily. There's Erica Wilson. Was it off the block? They say no. Yeah, no, it was not because the, the high official here pointed to Arizona State. Then they pointed back to Washington. Discussion going on with the side judge over here as well. But after all of that, it is a Husky point. So 4-3 Washington now with their first lead of the match. A good hit, though, from Erica Wilson on that one. Tough to go cross court like that. Orlandini up to Van Sant. That one is long, and it didn't touch anybody on the Sun Devil side, so this set is tied back up again. That set just dying inside a little bit. If the setter can push out Krista Van Sant, her line is going to look really good as that's where the shorter end of their block is. It's Roland again. Good dig in the backcourt from Teslovich. Mindeville sends it back over. Now Nogueras back to Van Sant. Another excellent dig from Arizona State. Playing good defense so far. Gabby Parker gets her first attempt and a great block at the net from Van Sant and Roland. Believe that was Van Sant with her hands on that one. Evan Sanders in for the Huskies. Digs are so important because they give your team an opportunity to hit. But the end of that transition, being able to swing aggressively back, really can determine whether or not you get the point. Sanders comes right back into it, replacing Nogueras as you thought she may, kind of running the rotation with the setters, and she puts a serve right into the net there. Lauren Barfield also came in for the Huskies. Now Shannon McCready is back to serve, the freshman from Aia, Hawaii. And that one is in Vincent. Find some empty space off a of Sun Devil hand. And Huskies get the point back and it's 6-5. Ryan Deaney with a great dig in the backcourt. Gabby Parker will send that back over. Parker again on the far side, and a great hit there from the sophomore from Eugene. Doesn't see too much action in conference, but a great kill from Gabby Parker. This 6-2 lineup that Jim's decided to run has really panned out for Gabby Parker. It opens up a hitting spot there in the front row, and she's done well with it so far. Blocked at the net, Arizona State's able to recover, and blocked again by Barfield. There she is again, right in the middle, and that one miss hit off McCready's hands. And the dogs get a point. So Van Sant, the freshman from Redlands, California. And Orlandini's trying to get her mitts under that one, and she did, but it deflected wildly over to the table on the far side. Danica Mendeville, sophomore from Linden, Utah, is back to serve. She's also having a good season for the Sun Devils, averaging about 2.6 kills a set. There's Castle, but right into the net. So an error for Ashley Castle and a point for the Huskies. That is a hard hit for, for any hitter when it's set so long and you're having to track the ball that you really just want to hit it high and hard to a deep corner where you have the most space. 
Parker back to serve. Gets that ball way up there and a lot of power behind it, but too long. And a point for ASU as Wilson will check back in for the Sun Devils. Orlandini also back in for Washington. And they're going to trade service errors to a point for Washington. First team to double digits. Huskies now up 10-7. Aguirres back to serve. Floats that one over, handled well by ASU, coming flying up to the net. Can't get a number, there we go. Kylie Terhune with the kill. Good kill from the redshirt freshman. Now Teslovich back to serve for the Sun Devils. Summer Ross misplays that. Orlandini there to back her up. Van Sant. She get a lucky bounce on that one. She did. I think it hit the top of the net and then fell in. Van Sant did a great job of being ready to be a hitter. She obviously wasn't the main rotational hitter right there, but she saw her players, teammates were in trouble and bailed them out. Tipped off the block, so the Sun Devils stay within two. It's 11-9. Castle back to serve. Ninth in the conference with just over three and a half kills per set, and she puts one right into the net on that serve. So a lot of service errors for ASU here in this opening set. And one thing you don't want to do is give Washington free points. And really, the same is true for Washington. They haven't, like we had said, they've kind of struggled these last couple weekends, so being able to just do the little things right is going to help them in the long run. Mendeville gets the kill there. A couple of bad hits on the Washington side and just kind of falls down. So 12-10. Washington still with the lead. They've had it since they went up 4-3. That one off the block. And a kill for Bianca Rowland. Her second of the evening. Barfield and Sanders back in. Sanders had a service error on her first serve, so we talked about her needing to have a little consistency, get a little better, and that one was in, and that'll help, and you heard. I think we heard down here on the ASU defense, in, 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 and no one went for it. Classic miscommunication where you both look at each other. I thought you had it. Someone does have it there. That was Teslovich and Castle to let that one go by just a serve ago from Sanders. She'll set up Parker right into the block, but out. Some bad luck from ASU, because that was a great block for the Sun Devils. Gabby Parker starting off so strong. Two kills off of four attempts. And that's going to be a timeout called by Jason Watson, the head coach for Arizona State University, with Washington up 15 to 10. When we come back, the Huskies will have a five-point advantage here at Alaska Airlines Arena on UWTV.
Welcome back to Alaska Airlines Arena. Washington with a five-point advantage here in set number one over Arizona State University. Evan Sanders back to serve. Flying to the net was Mendeville, but that one is wide and pretty long on that one, so wide and a bit long. Not, not quite long enough that it had been long. It would have been out, but wide there, so a point for Washington. 16-10 now, their first set advantage. Van Sant hits it, but a nice dig from Castle. Mendeville into the block. They'll try her again. That one, better luck on that one. Off the block and out, so a point for Arizona State. One thing you gotta like about these Arizona State outside hitters is they are going for it every time. And from up where we're sitting, they don't look like they're the tallest outside hitters, but they are sure feisty. Arizona State giving the serve away again on that one, so 17-11. Easiest point to get in all of volleyball. Don't have to do any work for it. Van Sants back to serve. Right into the block. Lauren Barfield did it on her own there. And there is a reason she is ninth in the NCAA in blocks per set at one and a half. And another timeout is going to be called by Arizona State. Probably a much needed one down 18-11. So, so Lauren. far, Washington playing pretty well. Yeah, Lauren Barfield has really been the sleeper player on this team, in my opinion. She has, this is her first year really taking a major stance on this team, and her block has been phenomenal. We talked about the schedule a little bit earlier, how tough it had been the last couple of weeks for Washington. You see the schedule here brought to you by BECU. They'll take on Arizona, the only Sunday game of the year because the football game is tomorrow. And then also we'll have the Cal game on November 22nd for you on UWTV and the all-important cross-state rivalry with Washington State. But then another tough road trip, November 4th and 5th down to Los Angeles. Those are two very, very good teams. So once you get into that LA road trip, it's four tough days in a row for you. Definitely, and that end of the season, the first year now that we have 12 teams in the Pac-10 that they're playing the Crosstown rival back to back, and that's the first time they've done that in this conference. My understanding a little bit of a scheduling quirk and talking to our faithful sports information director for volleyball, Michael Bruskett, who says a little bit of a scheduling quirk. Don't quite know how it worked out that way, but you do play, as you can see there, they'll play Washington State on the 22nd here at home. That's the Tuesday before Thanksgiving, then they'll go over to Pullman for the day after Thanksgiving. So get to know your opponent pretty well in two days, I suppose. Oh my, Terhune gets lucky on that one. She looked like she was just gonna send it back over. Let's try it again and. That was a great play by her. She shot it down the line at the setter and Evan Sanders, who's back row, released way too soon like it was a free ball. She needs to stay back there and dig first. Sanders sets up Barfield, and that one gets blocked. A rare occasion. Her attempts get blocked because of Barfield's height. But that one smacks right back into her face. She looks a little surprised, too. Six feet and five inches of Lauren Barfield. Ross into the block, but out. So Washington gets a point there, 19-13 now the score. Those sets really low, and for someone as tall as Lauren Barfield, you really can get it up higher because she can go over the block. And even that, Summer Ross did a great job using the block, but she just looked strained, like it could just use a few more inches on height. Oh, right into the block again. This time it's Kylan Munoz. Timed that absolutely to perfection. Parker's back to serve. Five points away from a first set win here for Washington. And that one's long, so Gabby Parker with a mistake on that one. I believe that's her second service error. And Orlandini will come back in. Yeah, the snap on her serve right now is not quite there, which is what's sailing it long. So, and that's a tough one to read. Yep, I don't think Coach McLaughlin's gonna be too disappointed with that. Jenna Orlandini made the right call. We've discussed it before. If the ball's at your shoulders, let it go. It was at her shoulders, but it just dropped just in on that one, so. 
Munoz. Now that's a way to get momentum back with power behind that kill. Take a look at that one more time. Just comes flying in out of nowhere, and I think that ball broke the sound barrier into the Arizona State backcourt. Great serve, so high. It's tough to know what to do. Oh, a missed opportunity. And sometimes it's better to be lucky than good at some stuff. And Castle was just going to send that back over, but it clips the net. And then I believe that was Roland and Munoz were both waiting for it. But then it just took that odd spin off the top of the net. And some doubles get a point. Yeah, that was just a brain lapse on defense by Kylan over in left front. Good dig by Orlandini. Kylan Munoz sends that one into the backcourt. Can't find any open room. But Van Sant will keep it alive for the Huskies. Now Ross near his side. And that one, almost a good dig there from Murphy, but falls shallow on that one. 22-16, Washington now three points away from a first set victory. Here's Castle. And Summer Ross has tried to stick her hand out there to stop that one, to put something between the ball and the backcourt in the way, and unable to do it there. The Washington block right now looks so disciplined, but other parts of their game, like the defense behind it and some of their hitting and the setting and all that just looks a little step behind where their blocking's at right now. Van Sant dug out well by Arizona State. That one won't fall. Good play by Nogueras to keep that alive. Now Van Sant again, and that one is way long. Looks like she mishit that one pretty badly and a point for Arizona State. Talked about how good the Washington block's doing right now, keeping ASU to just 6.5 hitting percentage. Washington doing pretty much pedestrian right where you want them at about 26.9% right now. Van Sant wide on that one, so two straight attacking errors for her, and a timeout's going to be taken by Coach Jim McLaughlin. Probably a good timeout to take here, and so will we. When we come back, Washington still sporting a 22-19 lead from Alaska Airlines Arena on UW-TV. Tonight's broadcast is brought to you by BECU and Puget Sound Region USA Volleyball. We talked about it before we went to break. Washington dominating at the net. Four blocks to Arizona State's one. And if we look at the score right now, the Huskies are up by three. So it's the blocks that have made the difference for them in this game. And those free points Arizona State's given them on that another service error. And that's a timeout from Arizona State, but I thought they'd taken two already. So, you but know, either way, they'll take a timeout here. In the service errors, too, there's been a lot of service errors by ASU, which has really bailed out the Huskies in this game so far, and it's given them the four-point lead that they have right now. But the Huskies really can do a better job of just being on point and being a little bit more precise here. UWTV is your home for UW women's sports during the 2011-2012 season. We'll bring you Huskies to the power of women from Alaska Airlines Arena during the UW's volleyball and women's basketball seasons. And with Gymnastics Rewind, we'll highlight the best events from the Gym Dogs. And next spring, we'll broadcast games from the decorated UW softball team. Don't miss the action exclusively 
on UW-TV, channel 27. 23-19 the score here in set number one. Huskies can put this one away with a couple more points. It'll be Orlandini back to serve for the dogs. Pretty good sized crowd in here tonight for as bad of traffic as we were having around town today. Been downright horrific all over the place today. Orlandini, one of the team captains for this team, also leads the team in aces. Just a real vocal presence there in the back row for them. And gets that dig beautifully. Van Sant, that one off of Castle's hand and out. And a point for Washington, make this set point as well. By the by, just to make the point even better, Jenna Orlandini's 19 service aces, fourth in the conference. She is pretty studly in the service aces. As a matter of fact, the Huskies have three players in the top 10 of service aces, including Van Sant. And ASU gets the point on that one. Just to finish my thought on that, Kyla Munoz also in the top 10. Wilson puts that over. Still set point for Washington. Van Sant off the block. And that one should find some empty space, and it does. So Washington with a first set 25-20 victory here at Alaska Airlines Arena. Looks like that home cooking just what the Huskies needed after a tough, tough couple of weeks on the road. We'll be right back with set number two here on UWTV. Welcome back to Alaska Airlines Arena. Tonight's broadcast is brought to you by BECU and Puget Sound Region USA Volleyball. Take a look at those hitting percentages there. Washington at a really good solid. That's about what you want to see, 27.6% Arizona State. Kind of reflective of how good the Washington block is at 9.1%. Carolyn, we were talking about this a little bit at the break, but just how tough it is for Washington to be playing with two setters that are rotating in. We've talked about it before, how they're kind of the quarterback of the offense, so it's kind of akin to switching a quarterback midway through a game. Yeah, when you hear people throw out running a 6-2 in volleyball, it means that the team's running with two setters. And that is really hard because as hitters, you get used to how a setter sets the ball, and that's part of your rhythm. So when you're changing it up and having to switch between two in a game, usually it's tough. So you don't see many teams run it. Now, I mean, it could have everything to do with how well each setter connects with the middle, and that being important, getting both Bianca and Lauren involved in the game. Um, but, you know, we don't really know why Jim switched to this lineup 
halfway through the season. See Jenny Nogueras there serving. You saw Evan Sanders a second ago as well. Those are the two setters rotating in for Washington. Here's Munoz. Handled easily by Arizona State. And that one, I believe, was not off the block, and it wasn't. So an attacking error there for Mendeville. And a point for Washington as they open the scoring in the second set. It'll be very important to come out quickly for Washington. As we talked about a little bit earlier. Play your offense. Get up early so you can relax and just play some defense. Great save by Krista Van Sant off that tip. She does it all, doesn't she? A great block from Washington. Bianca Rowland, fourth in the nation, not just the conference, but the nation in blocks per set. And she shows you why right there. This team lethal at the net with their defense, first in the NCAA. Just short of three and a half blocks a set. Absolutely outstanding figure. Going a lot more to Mendeville this set. And that one is blocked but out, so a point for Arizona State. And Wilson's back to serve for Arizona State. Nokanis keeps it on her side of the net with a little right hand, and then Roland's just got to tap it back over. Orlandini. Looked like Van Sant and Munoz weren't talking there because Munoz was right underneath Van Sant. Chris has just got to tap it back over. Good block from Washington. That one powered into the backcourt, but I believe they're going to get Washington in the net. They're saying that was Bianca. So now we're tied up at 2 2 and a shame there because that was a really good dig on that powerful hit there. Roland gets up, and that one just laser beam straight, straight down, showing you how good she is as a senior, all four years of that experience right there. That one looked like it could have shaved the top of the net if it had any long hair on it. Mendeville right into the block. Try her again, but a bad set, but that's from the libero. Preach, so don't expect her to set it very well, and that's off the antenna, and Arizona State will get the point. Pretty back for the Sun Devils. Get it's got a hustle to go get that one, and then Van Sant, can she keep it over? I think that one. And yeah, I believe that's going to be the correct call. Went over the antenna, so that is out. So Arizona State gets the point. See if they need to reduce those service errors. They had four of them in the first set. Washington, not much better. They had three. Oh, right into the block. That one almost looked too easy for Bianca Roland on that one. Almost anticipated where that shot was going, and Mendeville didn't do a really good job to try to fool her or go around it at all. ASU can really take advantage of a big block by hitting high and hard because they're jumping so high that if they can get off the block and really use it, it could be their advantage. Van Sant's attack is wide there, so an error for her means a point for Arizona State. And Sant with four kills, but four errors. So she's sitting on a zero attacking percentage. Washington hitting just 20% as a team right now. That one off the block. Gabby Parker, every time she gets a kill, she is so, so happy about it. Of all the hitters that are really trying so hard to find their rhythm with each of these setters, Gabby Parker is coming in big. Bounding like Bugs Bunny on that one. Zevin Sanders is back to serve for Washington. And Sanders got her hand on that one, but that'll fly out and a point for Arizona State. They retake the lead at 6-5. So back and forth, second set is going and see how Washington responds here. 
Sanders sets up Parker, pokes that one over. Castle, there she is. I haven't called her name much this second set. Sanders sets up Parker again. Good dig, though, from Murphy. And that's going to be four hits on Arizona State. And a point for Washington. So here's Van Sant back to serve. Oh, my goodness. What a hit from Wilson, but a great dig. approach to finish it off. That was just great play from Washington there, especially Erica Wilson's hit there was about as hard as we have seen. You might have heard the crowd gasp at how hard that was. I would not want to be the one in the way of that, that's for sure. Off the block and out, a point for the Sun Devils. Should mention Gabby's numbers right now. Four kills, no errors off of eight attempts. She's really great night. Sensational evening so far for Gabby Parker. Teslovich back to serve. The crowd gives her guff every time she's back there for the number of times she bounces it. Parker rises up, but that one right back down off the hands of Erica Wilson. What a block there from the junior from Oceanside, California. We'll see if the setter repeats that set, giving Gabby a second chance. And she does it. Barfield right there, and she gets a kill. Lauren Barfield, her kill's kind of her few and far between most matches, but she really makes the most of them a lot of times. Take a look at this one. Uh, there's Parker's from earlier. As I said, Barfield really makes the most of them. She gets up really high, uses all Six feet, five inches of her frame. Should note also, Arizona State, they're a decently tall team. Good block from Washington there, but Washington really does have a height advantage here, especially with Barfield in the middle at 6'5". Most players for Arizona State at about six feet, six feet, one inch. Oh, and a great, it's gonna be a great save from Arizona State. Great dig by Teslovich. They are doing everything they can to keep the ball alive except being able to swing tough back at the Huskies. Munoz with the point here, right into the block. And the junior from Monroe picks up another point, or another kill, I should say. They're second on the day. It's Gabby Parker. Wow, another big gasp from this Alaska Airlines Arena crowd, and for good reason. Arizona State gets the point there. You can speak a little bit to how hard it is to get that much spin and that much power on a serve that's got to be relatively precise. And it really helps when you keep that ball in front of you to do that. I think sometimes it gets behind the head and then that's where you start to see the balls float really long out of bounds. Munoz and Barfield pokes it right over. That was just a great instinctual play from Lauren Barfield. Off the Arizona State block, she sees it coming her way, finds some open space and just smacks it right back. Watch it again, there it is. Simple. Munoz does the work and brings the heat, and Lauren Barfield gets that nice, easy <laughs> tip for a kill. Takes the credit on that one a little bit. Team I'm play. I'm sure Kylan won't mind at all. Here's Wilson again right into the block, and that falls on the Washington side, so a point for the visitors from Tempe. They'll head over to Washington State, over to Pullman after this. The Huskies will welcome in Arizona. And Rola with another kill right into the block. But it falls down on Arizona State's side of the net and a point for Washington. This one's been back and forth tight for much of the set. It's 11-10 right now, Washington. And a great kill there from Mendeville. Eleven, eleven. 
whole lot of ones on that scoreboard right now for these teams. Orlandini got in there, kept that one alive. Van Sant, but it's dug out by Preach, and a great save, great hustle there, and miscommunication on the Washington side, so credit goes to McCready for hustling to get that one, and then Roland and I believe Munoz and Nogueres on that one. That one just kind of fell between all three of them. For being the second part of the season, it definitely has shown that they've switched their lineup because they're just not, there's a kind of a gelling factor that seems off in a couple places. Certainly right there, all three of them kind of just looked at each other. And right. I thought that was yours. At this point in the season, you should really start to have a feel for who's taking what on the court. And those things where the ball drops between you two or there's a missed tip should really be few and far between. Markanovich with the kill on that one, her first on the evening. You might have heard a little more cheering than usual for an opposing player here. That's because Markanovich is from Coquitlam, British Columbia, Canada. So her family down to watch here. And I believe they're gonna get Nogueres for going over the net, I think, on that one. Try to keep it on her side, and Arizona State extends their lead to 14-12. Little extra volume here in Alaska Airlines Arena. Barfield, or I beg your pardon, Roland went up like she was gonna put a lot of power on that one, tapped it over, Arizona State handled it, and she gets the block on the other end. Blocking statistically doesn't necessarily have an exact correlation with wins, but <laughs> the blocking has really been the highlight here for the Huskies and what's kept them in this game, they're a point down, but really helped in the victory in the last one. Flying up was Castle. So Holy much power. cow. Wow. She came running up and attacked that ball like it did something wrong to her. We'll take a timeout. Sun Devils with a 15-13 lead here in set number two on UWTV. to Alaska Airlines Arena. There's Bianca Rowland. Four kills, five blocks on the evening for Bianca. She's having a good night at the net on both in both facets of the game there. Senior, one of the team captains, and one of the most experienced players on the court for the Huskies. Barfield gets another one of her patented little taps over. And she gets another kill. Barfield having a good evening too. Four kills, six attempts. Ross sends that over. We're gonna get a whistle here. And a net violation against the Sun Devils, so Washington will get the point. That is one area. So many girls jumping at the net, going underneath the net is just a big no-no in volleyball because girls could come down on your ankle. That one looked a bad missed time set there, but it works out for Washington because Wilson was coming down as she hit that one, so a bad set, but just kind of off a couple of hands and find some empty room. Here's Teslovich. 
Sanders to Barfield. Uh, power on that one, but a good dig from Teslovich, and Murphy's just going to have to send it back over for Arizona State. Now Ross, and that is off of Murphy's hands and way back to the Arizona State bench, and a point for Washington. Arizona State doing a good job of digging up on that first hit, but really the turnaround for them is being able to, to get a tough swing off of it, and that's called your transition. That one off of Preach's hands. Good save there, though, from McCready. And Arizona State's able to send it back over. They'll have it again here. Here's Castle. A lot of power on that one. Right into the block and out. So Arizona State picks up the point. 17-16, Arizona State. This one like a teeter-totter. It has gone back and forth. Arizona State has played well against good opponents. They took a set from number five Stanford last Saturday in their win, and that one is in. What a down-the-line shot there from Kylan Munoz. Arizona State doesn't think that that hit in. So get us back to serve now. 17 all. That one looked mishit there off of Castle's hands, but they're able to recover. Credit McCready on that one. Munoz coming to the net. Good dig by Preach. Mendeville off the block, and that stays in. So double bonus points there. Could have gone out. They would have gotten the point, but they get it anyway. Point for Arizona State having a much better hitting game this set, hitting 26% here in set number two. And these hitters are really going for it. Staying aggressive, and that's what you want to see as a coach, no matter who you're playing. Munoz right into the block. Van Sant gets a hand on it, and Orlandini not able to save that one, and a point goes to Arizona State, and a timeout is going to be called by head coach Jim McLaughlin. 19-17, Sun Devils with a two-point lead here in set number two. So Washington struggling a little bit against the Sun Devils here in the second set. Take a look at how the Pac-12 stacks up right now. A tough conference if there ever was one. Standings are brought to you by Puget Sound Region USA Volleyball. And you see USC, California, UCLA, Stanford, all very good squads near the top. And all with double-digit wins in conference. And then Washington, Oregon, Arizona. And then the bottom of the conference kind of falls out a bit, too. And the top four teams are all playing each other this weekend. So they probably may switch a little bit amongst those top four, but they're set at least for this weekend. A little bit of cannibalism going on in the top four right there. So Washington can, with a couple of wins this weekend, could conceivably move up in the Pac-12 standings. The tough, tough conference for volleyball, probably the toughest in the country, no doubt about that. This match, ASU has really reduced their errors on serving and hitting, and it's shown so far because they're two up on the Huskies. Well, as I said, they took a set from Stanford just last weekend, so Arizona State can play with the big girls. Here's Ross down the line, but out and wide. So the Sun Devils have a three-point lead, their largest of the day. This is where you just regroup, go back to the basics, serving and passing. Oh, goodness me, what a block from Bianca rolling off the Mendeville attempt there. And Washington gets a point back now within two. What a great block from Bianca Roland. Mendeville came flying up. Good save from Washington. Now Van Sant tipped off the Arizona State block, so the Huskies get a point there. Now trail by one as Ross is back to serve. And a timeout is going to be called by Arizona State. We'll take a break as well. The Huskies trailing right now by one here on UWTV.
Welcome back to Alaska Airlines Arena. Tonight's broadcast is brought to you by BECU and Puget Sound Region USA Volleyball. Summer Ross back to serve the Huskies down one point here in the second set, 2019. Ross handles that one easily. Now here's Van Sant, far side, pokes it back over. A little unusual for her not to show off her power, but she gets the point and it's 20 all. A little finesse touch on that one from Van Sant. Ooh, and Ross floated that one in, and Arizona State does a good job to let that one fall as Teslovich got out of the way of that one at the last second. This will be McCready back to serve for the Sun Devils. Now up by one. Played a 25, got a win by two. Orlandini receives. Munoz will poke it back over there. Huskies almost get away with that on two straight kills, but they won't get away with it on that one. And Roland pokes it over. They do get away with it there, though. Not to say get away with it, but they do it there. So well done on the Huskies' part there to see the hole in the Arizona State defense. When you start seeing a lot of tips, it can mean one of a couple things. One, the set's low. Two, the hitter's timid. <laughs> or three, it's scoring a lot. So I always like to see it when they're real aggressive and the tips are more sporadic. Try to change it up a little bit. Sun Devils with a point now up one. Van Sant digs that one out, but that's too long and Arizona State will send it right back over. Castle takes advantage. They're now up two points and another timeout is gonna be called by Jim McLaughlin, and we will take a timeout as well here on UWTV. Welcome back to Alaska Airlines Arena. You see the hitting percentages have really evened out. Arizona State now up to 17.6% and Washington now down to 22.7%. So just what the Sun Devils wanted and they also have what they want on the scoreboard. 23-21 their lead here in set number two. Washington does have a one nothing set advantage. No get us. here's Roland and that's just what the doctor ordered for the Huskies. That's her best hit, is when she can take the slide behind the head. And I think Jenny sets her the best of both those setters. Roland having a great night. Six kills, six blocks. There's Sanders back to serve. That one almost fell in front of Castle. Here she comes attacking again, and that's off the block and out. So the Sun Devils now at set point here with a chance to steal a set from the 10th ranked Huskies. Ashley Castle has been quiet in the first part of this set and the end of last, but she's sure coming on strong for them here. 11 kills on the night. Van Sant off the block. Arizona State will handle that. McCready sends it over to Castle, so he'll just put it back over. Van Sant taps it over. Arizona State can take care of it, and they do. Another chance for Washington, and that one misread by Barfield and Parker, but Parker luckily there to put it over. And that one right into the block and down. And Arizona State picks up the point and the set. So we go into the break tied at one set apiece. 25-20 in the first set and 25-22 for Arizona State in the second. UWTV presents another episode of our new volleyball series, Quick Set. Tonight's installment asks, which of a volleyball player's five senses 
can lead to a championship season. Stay tuned for that after the break. Surround me like a waterfall
Arizona State back on the floor after they took set number two from the Huskies. Huskies take set one, 25-20. Then Arizona State takes set number two, 22-25. I'm Michael Preston, Carolyn Farney here, as we now need at least four sets to determine a winner in this one. First match in which we'll need at least four sets here at Alaska Airlines Arena all season long as well. So the Huskies, not the best second set, that's for sure. Coach Jim McLaughlin probably not terribly happy with that one. Some statistics for you after a couple of sets. The kills, pretty even, but those digs in Arizona State's favor. And attacking errors, big for Arizona State as well. But there you go, those service aces make up for it a little bit for Arizona State in that second set for sure. And I think everyone in the arena right now is really looking to see how the Huskies respond to that coming out of the locker room. Are we going to see a team that is just really tight and being able to really attack and be precise? Or are they still going to fumble around with some of those free balls that come over and just getting in rhythm with the setter? Bianca Rowland had an awfully good first couple of sets for Washington. Take a look at some of her highlights right here. Six kills. Six blocks as well for the senior from Linwood. Really leading the charge in blocking for the offense, but she's always been a great hitter for this UW team. Someone who's also having a bit of an unexpected good game. You see Bianca, another good kill right there. There she is waiting for set number two to begin is also Gabby Parker, the sophomore from Eugene, having an outstanding game with four kills. And this is the first time she's really gotten to see some good match play here in the arena, and she is taking advantage of every play she has with this new lineup change that's allowed her to get more play time in the front row. And not only that, but you're seeing such excitement come from her after she gets the kill, which just helps with some of that momentum that you try to get a team going with. Her season high in kills is five. Back on August the 26th, so way back when the season started and when the sun was out in Seattle against Prairie View A&M. So she might have a chance at getting to that tonight for sure. There's Gabby Parker and the rest of her Husky teammates as we are ready to begin set number three. Arizona State will serve to begin third set. Should also note, in that second set, we said it was back and forth a lot. We got the statistical proof. Five lead changes, 16 ties in set number two. Ashley Castle, a big part of that victory last match, or last set, excuse me. She had six kills in that second set, hit 38% for set number two. So vast improvement for her. And Gabby Parker off the block there. Arizona State will handle that. Mendeville gets that one off the block and an opening point for Arizona State. And they're up one to nothing in set number three. It's Castle back to serve again. An Arizona State team struggling a little bit this year. They beat Colorado back on October 15th for their only conference win all year as Van Sant's kill into the backcourt off a hand and out of play. As I said, they beat Colorado back on October 15th. That's their only conference win of the year. And then before that, their only win before that, or excuse me, the last win before that was on September 9th against Georgia Southern. So they've only won twice in the last two months, almost. Good dig from Arizona State. And a good, good kill there from Arizona State. Matter of fact, Arizona's second set victory, their first one here at Washington in Seattle since 2003. It's been a long time since they've played well here, and that one long off the hands of Markanovich and out, so the Huskies get a point. Huskies are going to want to earn some points here. Arizona State 
giving an error right there, but the Huskies really to start this track of improvement for them. They want to keep earning points just like that ace. Just like that, they will take that. Gabby Parker with the ace there. So the sophomore from Eugene having a great game so far. That jump serve really keeping the ball in front of her. Well, more good spin on that one. And a great block from Barfield. Once again, she gets up high and knocks that one right back down. Washington with a 4-2 lead, coming out and playing a little bit more inspired here in set number three. When you get a tough serve, it really does great things for you defensively because you get the other team out of their rhythm. Ooh, off the net right there. Handled well by Castle, though. Sanders has her pick. She'll go to Ross. That one a long dig. And Lucas will get up high and knock it right back. And a point for Washington. Already we're seeing better play by the Washington Huskies. Just really being able to finish out some points and take advantage of what ASU is giving them. Parker again, look at all that spin on that ball and that one tough to handle by Teslovich. They'll call that a service ace. So Gabby Parker with another service ace. And a timeout is gonna be called by Arizona State down six to two. We'll take a timeout as well on UWTV. Welcome back to Alaska Airlines Arena, Washington, with a 6-2 third set lead over the Arizona State Sun Devils. Gabby Parker is back to serve, and she's having a heck of a night. Four kills and a season high. Two aces for her. Her career high is three on September the 16th of last year against Pittsburgh. And the two aces doesn't really show you how hard she's been serving to get the defense off on Arizona State side, which is doing great things for Washington. Parker will check out here as Arizona State picks up a point. Shannon McCready back to serve for the Sun Devils. Sanders able to keep that on her side. Are they gonna call her in the net? Arizona State gets the point and I believe that's the call on that one. It's McCready back to serve for ASU. Sanders has her pick, she'll go to Munoz. Off the block, it looked like that one flew off of. Ahead. Yep, right off the noggin of Terhune and out. And Nogueras and Roland will come back in and Nogueras will go back to serve. Right off the noggin, I can't feel too good right off your head like that. At least it was deflected by a hand first. Exactly, slowed it down a little bit. Just the birds flying around your forehead a little bit, but it was shook it off. Looked like Terhune's fine. Right into the block there, almost lost that one. And good block from Washington there. It's Bianca Roland again, getting up and getting that one. That is her seventh block on the evening. And some are getting her hands on it too. You know, I can't say enough good things about how well Summer Ross lines up the block over there. And all the middles have to do is just close and they're getting good hands on it. Should note also there's a block assist and a block solo. Roland has seven block assists tonight. Also. 
That one a good block, though. Looks like Ross and Roland again on that one. And Roland not able to get in the way of that one, and that one flies off Munoz's forearm and out, so the Sun Devils pick up a point. It's 8-5. Arizona State seems to take a lot of time with some of their serves. Ross up to Nogueres, now to Roland. Van Sant. Munoz far side. Nice dig from Arizona State. That one to the back of the net and in. That was mighty close on the far side. Can't quite tell from here, but it was very, very close. Jenny really having to sprint there and transition to get those balls. It's almost like the digs and passes are really close to the net. That one a little easier for her as Ross will poke that one right back over. Castle gets it. She'll hit that one back. Munoz. That one long. Good save, though, from McCready. That one going to be kept in. And Arizona State will just hold it. That would have been four hits. So that'll be Washington with the serve. The freshman, Summer Ross, back from Carlsbad, California. One of the two sensational freshmen this Washington team has. And that one off the hands of Preach into the net. And ASU unable to dig it out. They will call that a service ace. See Ross back there again. Having a great freshman season for Washington. Castle comes flying up again. Faked like she was going to put some power behind it and then tapped it, but it looked like Roland and Munoz were ready for that one. The tips in this game definitely need to get some height to go up and over the block. There's no just going over the net with this block on both sides. And that was off the antenna. So a point for Washington. Terhune, the guilty party on that one. And a timeout will be called by Arizona State here. And we'll take a break as well. You're watching UW Volleyball on UW-TV. Welcome back to Alaska Airlines Arena. Washington sporting a 12-6 lead here in set three. We're tied at a set apiece, and Carolyn Farney to my right. I'm Michael Preston. And Carolyn, we were chatting a little bit at the break about how Washington here in this third set's really playing to their strengths a little bit. They've been strong this year in service aces and blocks. So that means they're serving aggressive, and that's really been the difference here in set three is getting Summer Ross and Gabby to get on some little runs serving. Bianca Rowland with the kill there. We'll take one more look at it and right into the shin bone of Stephanie Preach. Oh, and a great service ace from Washington. A great finesse serve from Summer Ross on that one to get that one to fall in like that. Worth the second look, definitely. Look at that. What a nice serve from Summer Ross. So hard to do on a jump float. Munoz near side. Off the block, handled by Arizona State. Here's Castle right into the block, and ASU gets a point and the serve back. Washington still has them double up, though, at 14-7. What I love about Castle is it doesn't matter who's on the other side of the net. She is swinging hard, and it's paying off. 12 kills for Castle. She's hitting 25.9%. Van Sant. She has been very quietly having a nice game. Eight kills. 
for her. It's kind of the quietest eight kills I've seen from Krista Van Sant. There's Jenna Orlandini. Wearing the other colored shirt. That is called a libero in this game. And the thing that makes them special is they can only play in the back row. And they don't take up a substitution. So that means they play, they can rotate in for two different players in the back row. Introduced in the NCAA just a few years ago too, not that long ago that you played without one. So it's only been about six or seven years that they've had the libero, so. Yeah, about 0-2. Okay, so about nine years then. <laughs> My math is all kinds of off today, unfortunately. Teslovich. Nogueres, now to Parker. Was that off the block? It was. And Gabby Parker's got five kills. That ties her season high. Career high is 10. She had that against Gonzaga last season. Evan Sanders back in now to set for Washington, and she'll serve. So they're rotating in the setters again. And that one is long. And for Sanders, it's another service error she's racked up, unfortunately. If I get the numbers here in front of me, that's her second service error on the evening. And that one long, so Arizona State will give it right back. Van Sant will go back to serve for the Huskies. Something you really don't want to do after a service error from one team is just give it right back to them. Washes it out in points there. Oh, now that's just really good instincts there from McCready, but they are going to call her for a net violation. She smiled like she knew she might have done it. And when you're, when you're trying to appeal to the officials, no, I didn't do it. Try not smiling when you do that. Yeah. The ball was so tight and she was trying to slam it down. Just caught the net. Van Sant, not enough finesse on that one as that falls into the net. I kind of saw what she was looking for there. There was some empty space in the Arizona State defense there. There's Erica Wilson. Sanders going to set up Parker. Is it off the block? It was not, so a point goes to the Sun Devils. So here's Wilson back to serve again. 18-11. Washington still with a pretty comfy seven-point lead. McCready will send that over. Orlandini. Sanders, Barfield, good save from Castle. And Teslovich had to shove Castle out of the way to get to that one. Can't hit it twice in a row, and Ross right into the block, but Orlandini's right behind her to save that one. Van Sant will push it over. Orlandini handles that one easily. Here's Parker, and that one will fall in. And Gabby Parker is having quite a night now with half a dozen kills. And when you're making a long defensive run like they were right here, you want to be swinging over the net as much as you can. If you have to send a free ball over to the other team, it's just giving them the chance to set up on a perfect set. There's Parker's bombastic serves again. Mendeville right into the block. Good block from Barfield and Ross. Van Sant's going to send it over to Munoz. And she taps that over. And it hit, I thought. It looked like Mendeville got a hand under it, but. Yeah, it did look like they got that up clean. Take another look at that, see if we can tell here. Well, that's awfully close, can't quite tell. Yeah, it almost looked like this, the spin on that ball, like it hit off an arm, because it rotated back the other way. But they're down there on the floor and we're up here. Yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> Gabby Parker back to serve again. Look at the spin on that one. What speed there from Gabby Parker. Van Sant sends that one back over. Arkanovich puts that one wide, so Washington gets the point. They're now up double digits. It's 21-11. Probably just what head coach Jim McLaughlin wanted to see coming out of the break. Parker again, right into the net. And there's some of that the, the issue with that, with that server. You get so much top spin and so much speed on it, that is liable to happen. Oh 
Some very loud fans right behind us. It's McCready back to serve. Munoz, easily taken care of by Arizona State there. Into the game for the first time today. Nora Tuioti Mariner sent that one over for Arizona State. Here she is again, taps that one back over. Van Sant puts that one right into the net. So four hits on Washington, and it's 21-13. And this is exactly where Washington can just close the door on this set. 21-13, they've got a lead, but this is where you really have to be crisp with every point to the end. Don't leave the door open, even a crack. Slam it shut on any team in the Pac-12. And Ross gets the kill on that one. A little tap over, and it falls at the feet of the Sun Devils blockers. Snogueres is back into the match. Dug out by Preach. And there was Tui OT Mariner on that one. It's a kill for Arizona State, and she is back to serve as well. Munoz comes flying in. Good block from Arizona State, though. Castle, wow, it didn't touch a blocker, but you saw Evan, or uh, excuse me, Krista Van Sant just dive out of the way of that one. She wanted no part of that ball. Can't say that I blame her either. That thing was moving a million miles an hour, and that is some really bad communication there from Arizona State. Summer Ross back to serve for set point. Will float in, Arizona State will handle it. Here comes Castle, pokes that one over, good save from Nogueres. Now Orlandini over to Van Sant, and what a kill from Chris to Van Sant to close out set number three. So Washington now with a two to one set advantage as we take a break to go to set number four on UWTV. Welcome back to a bonkers Alaska Airlines Arena. There's Gabby Parker, six kills on the evening and two service aces having a fantastic night here at Alaska Airlines Arena. Watch these aces again. The spin on those balls is just incredible and she is so pumped up after each one of them too. Gabby's job on this team right now is to come in with firepower. 
Her job is to hit well, and that means hitting well in the front row and also serving. So when you see she's gotten two aces, but her serving aggressive and getting it in is helping the team just purely by getting them on their heels and the ball going some different places. So she's done well tonight. By the way, Bianca Rowland also with eight blocks on the evening. She is one away from a season high and a career high, or tying it at least. Take a look at her. Teams have switched benches again. Washington will have the serve here in set number four. First time we've gotten to say that all year here. So Arizona State, a feisty, feisty ball club. Took a set from Stanford last week. They take another set from the top 10 ranked team in Washington. So Washington with a 2-1 set lead, a chance to finish this match up with a set victory here, but not a good start there as the Sun Devils get the first point. Sanders sets up Van Sant. She pokes it over, and that one worked that time. So maybe Washington seeing something in the Arizona State defense that these little pokes are really working for them. Yeah, definitely. Seeing that defender way down the line and it just wide open space. Van Sant coming forward with the serve. Handled by Arizona State and right into the block. There's Lauren Barfield again. She is just phenomenal at the net. Ninth in the nation in blocks per set on a team that's the best in the country in blocks per set. So high praise for the senior from Bellevue. Tuioti Mariner sends that one over and she will get the kill. Her second on the evening. Terhune checks back in for ASU. Oh, was that in? Yes, it was. Summer Ross let that one go. It's close like that. Sometimes you just want to play it just to make sure, but must have thought it was going out. Obviously, anyhow, 3-2, Sun Devils with the lead. Sanders up to Barfield. Sends that one over now. Tui OT Mariner sends that one back over. Parker with another kill. She is so pumped up after every one of those. And she is back to serve with these just bombastically quick and spinning serves. Look at that. Just ecstatic. Watch her again here. This has got to be so precise. But right into the net. And sometimes when you're not precise, I mean, that is just by just inches, inches, that if you're off, even less than that, that one will go into the net. But still, Gabby Parker with another kill. A season high for her with seven. Munoz gets the ball back for Washington. And it is tied up at 4-4 here in set number four. Kylan doing such a great job this year taking line shots more than she's done in the past. Last season hit a lot of cross court, but it's so great to see her mix it up. That was Terhune on the outside. Now here comes Munoz again. And Tui OT Mariner just sends that one back over. And a great dig from Preach for Arizona State. Keeps that one alive. And Castle smacks that one right into the block. But Bianca Roland is there again. Her ninth block on the day. Summer Ross also in there. So nine block assists for Roland, seven for Ross. And for Bianca Rowland, that ties a season and career high in blocks in a match. And Castle gets one right back. Looked like the hit she wanted on the previous point. And she gets it this time, 5-5 the score. No 
get it. Sets up Munoz. And this one will fly into the crowd almost. And a point for Washington. Those high hits to the back row are really helpful because you're forcing, as a digger, you want to pass it right in front of you. So once it gets into that shoulder zone to where you know it's going in, it's just a lot harder to deal with. Castle right into the block, and she gets luckier, luckier, I should say, on that one, and it falls onto the Washington side for a point. So half a dozen points apiece for each team as Teslovich checks back in for Arizona State. 6-6. Six, six. Keep emphasizing, you cannot sleep on anyone in this conference. Anybody can keep it close. It's like you said, Carolyn, don't keep the door cracked open. Shut it. Vance Sant with a lot of power on that one off of Preach's arms and out of play. The outside hitters are finding their sweet spot on the libero shoulder those last couple hits. We've had a couple off a shoulder, even one off a forehead. Castle. Oh, there's another. There's another one off, off a shoulder, head. yep. Shoulder or head there. Van Sant sends it back over. Preach gets her arms under that one. Now Castle's just got to send it back over. She did a great job on that one. Ross digs it out. Parker pokes it back over, and Arizona State's going to be able to keep that one alive. Hectic hitting on the Arizona State side. Now Van Sant. Preach keeps this one alive. Good point going for both teams here. And that one, a great hit from Wilson. Saw Parker maybe coming back over towards her side and hits it cross court, and no one is there. Murphy coming back in for Arizona State. Seven, seven here in set four. Van Sant, that is out. Point for Arizona State and they take an eight, seven lead. Castle with 15 kills right now for Arizona State. Mendeville with eight, 11 for Van Sant for Washington. Munoz behind her with eight. Roland and Parker each with seven. Great pass by Summer Ross. That was such a high serve. Parker off the hands and it stayed in anyway. So she gets another point. And Gabby Parker's got her eighth kill of the match. Some of Gabby's hits, which make it so hard, is it kind of spins, but she kind of doesn't do a full snap of the wrist, and so the ball has somewhat of a float to it, and it floated right to that back corner. Sanders in the back court to serve here for Washington. Oh, Brown. Oh, Wilson, I beg your pardon, more power on that one. She gets another kill. Wilson very quietly having a good match, hitting 50% right now. Six kills, one error on 10 total attacks. And that one right into the block, and it stays in. So Arizona State picks up another point. And it's 10-8. Wouldn't be surprised if Arizona State gets a point here to see Jim McLaughlin use a timeout. Yeah, he thought about it on that last play. Good rejection of the net there from Barfield and Parker. Parker right there to receive that one. Here she is again. She gets set up for that one, but that's wide. And Jim McLaughlin will use a timeout here. And we will take a break as well. Arizona State with an 11-8 lead here in set four on UW-TV.
Welcome back to Alaska Airlines Arena. Washington trailing in set four to Arizona State. Take a look at the blocks, though. Washington showing you why they're first nationally. Blocks per set, they have 13 on the evening to Arizona State's just four. Once again, I'm Michael Preston, alongside Carolyn Farney as well. Here at Alaska Airlines Arena, Van Sant far side off the block, and Markanovich able to pick that one up. Comes to EOT Mariner. That one's long and it touched the block. Point for Arizona State. Looked like Van Sant was a little befuddled by that. She's saying it didn't touch her. The Huskies here need a good pass and need to put it away so they can start a little serving run. That wasn't it right there. And Parker's going to poke it over with her offhand. This is an opportunity for a good pass. Parker. And that one's blocked, and Orlandini can't get to it, and the Sun Devils have a five-point lead. So not what Jim McLaughlin wants coming out of his timeout, and you don't want to use your other one so quickly. Changing the lineup here brought Krista Van Sant to hit on the outside. Sanders actually let that one hit the net, and that one's off the block and out, and another point for Arizona State. But one thing the Huskies have to do, which Jim is going to talk to him about here, is they've got to pass the serve well. So over there, brought Krista over to kind of bail him out on the outside. But then the pass goes in the net. So I'm sure that's what he's talking to him there in the break. Do not miss the brand new series, Greatest Moments at Husky Stadium, airing right after tonight's match at 9 p.m. Tonight's episode features the best Apple Cup wins in Husky history. You can find out more by visiting uw.org or uwtv.org slash greatest moments and watch every Friday night at 6 p.m. and 9 p.m. only on UWTV Channel 27. Plenty of great Apple Cup moments to be sure at Husky Stadium. So Washington down by six points, and now they've got to go the rest of this set without a timeout. So if Jim McLaughlin wants to stop it, try to grab some momentum back, tell him something, he's not going to, he's going to have to count on Arizona State taking one. So a uh, bit of a risky move here, but there's a reason why Jim McLaughlin's the winningest coach in UW history. His 250th win earlier this season over Gonzaga. He's won a national championship here, which Carolyn Farney was a part of. He also won a championship at USC as their men's coach. It's Wilson. Parker able to get that one. Now Van Sant coming forward, and this one, no good defense by Arizona State. Thought that one was going to fall in. ASU playing great defense right now. Fielded again there by Wilson. And she sends that one right into the net. And if you're ASU, you hate to give away a scoring streak like that. Yeah, you really hate to do it that way. The one difference there with ASU is they were able to off their digs, still get swings back at the Huskies. And that was different than earlier in the first two sets, or first three sets. Markanovich takes care of that one and slams it back down on the dog side. Washington now down six. That one's wide. And a point for Arizona State. And they are pulling away here in set number four. It's 16 to nine. Gabby having an awesome first couple of sets. But you can't have that many hitting errors in a row. She's got five on the evening. So here's on a state couple. Wow, just then sometimes all the dice are rolling your way on that one, and it certainly did there for McCready. So I was about to say, Arizona State coach Jason Watson just kind of quietly watching from the bench. More than happy with his team's performance right now. He has to be. Huskies got to have a point here, and Lauren Barfield will get it for him. Down the line, and the Huskies finally able to break through into double digits. Still with a lot of work to do at 17-10. They have made a good comeback, and it was just last week against Oregon State. They trailed 12-2 in set three 
went on a 20 to four run in that set to get back in it. And that one, almost a little luck there off of Van Sant, but long. It looked like nobody back there for Arizona State, but just a touch wide, and they're up by eight. If you're on the floor right now, what do you think in your mind? How do you stay in this one and get back in it down this much this late in the set? The best they can do with these change-up of setters is to have their passing even out. If you can even out that serve-receive passing, it can calm your team down. And then if the setters can just do their job and get their hitters in some good situations, you can start get the fire going again. Ogeres is back in, so the new setter for Washington as Sanders comes out. See how that change helps. Castle comes roaring up to get that one, but Orlandini digs it out. Munoz will just put it back over. They're probably going to go to Castle again. They don't. Markovic. Markanovic, I beg your pardon, with the kill. And ASU with an eight-point lead. Preach is back to serve. Being down 19-11, the Huskies haven't served that much, but them being able to serve aggressively also helped them in the last set victory. Great dig by Preach there. Munoz. Saved by Arizona State and right into the block and Washington needed that one really badly. Boy, did they need that badly. You mentioned earlier, blocks aren't necessarily a good metric for how good your defense is, but momentum wise, it sure helps. That's for sure. And one of the girls who gave them one of their serving runs last set is back serving, Summer Ross. Castle taps that over, but Nogueras ready for that one. Orlandini going to set up Van Sant. Dug out by Preach. Here's Castle again. Off the block and out of play. It's 20 to 12. Sun Devils with the lead. Washington has played just two four-set matches before this all year. They have not played a five-set match. The Sun Devils are hitting with a lot of confidence right now. They're taking two, three swings to win the rally, but all of them are just coming with a lot of heat. A lot of noise here as Teslovich serves. Roland gets that one off the block and out. And the Huskies are within seven again, but it seems every time they've drawn within or gotten that point back, Arizona State has answered. Orlandini back to serve, trying to keep her team in this one. Oh my goodness, off the net and it stayed in. So the dice are really rolling all Arizona State's way in this one. And they answer the Washington point again. It's 21-13. This is where you really want to see a calm confidence in your team that has just built composure and kind of turns on the ignition at a point like this. We're certainly going to need to turn it on here as Roland gets the kill on that one. It's her ninth on the evening. Sanders back into the match, and she'll, she'll serve for the Huskies. I believe Kaylee Nelson also in the game for Washington right now. She just checked in. Two EOT Mariners just got to send that one back over. Sanders going to set up Van Sant. Looked a little shorter where Van Sant might have liked it. Wilson puts it in the backcourt. Orlandini with a great dig, though. Nelson sends it back over. And that one's right into the block. Van Sant and Roll or uh, Barfield, but that was Van Sant on that one. And Washington's within six. Back at the service line, you really want to keep the pressure on Arizona State. Nothing easy. Oh, Tui OT Mariner just placed that beautifully, and Orlandini unable to get to it. Great touch on that ball. And Arizona State's within three of a fourth set victory and sending this to five sets. A deciding fifth set, too. That one into the net. Even though you're still up six, you don't want to give free points to Washington. Van Sant's back to serve. Yeah. 
Chewy O.T. Mariner right into the block, and Lauren Barfield knows that one was important. Gets her team within five. Her fifth block on the evening. Rolling now with a career high 10. Markanovich pokes it over. No luck on that one. Great dig by Preach. Send it back over to Tui OT Mariner. Ross pokes it back over off the block, and Van Sant got in there to save it, and Sanders sends it back over. Right into the block again. Set up Tui OT Mariner for a second time in a row, bouncing around, and Arizona State's able to recover. Ross. Good save by Preach. Arizona State's been on the defense much of this point. And that one's off the antenna, so Washington will get it. A shame to end a great point like that off the antenna, but Washington will take it. Long rally, and the block was the one that did the hard work there. Lauren Barfield really making it look textbook the way she was touching those balls and keeping her team in that rally. Jason Watson takes a timeout for Arizona State. We will stay right here because Washington getting back in this one and doing it a great point there. And Arizona State, they really had them on their heels there, got the block, and that was just a great play by Washington to get the point there. Where can you watch unforgettable moments in Husky sports history? Well, on UWTV's Husky Classics, of course, you can tune in all week on UWTV Channel 27 for the games true fans want to see again and again. For a full schedule, visit uwtv.org slash Husky Classics. Plenty of those to enjoy as well. 22-18, Sun Devils with a fourth set lead. And this is an Arizona State team. We talked about this when Oregon State was here and when Colorado and Utah were here. These teams are very dangerous because Arizona State at 5-16 and 16 on the year, 1-11 in the Pac-12, they have nothing to lose here. And Washington has everything to lose. And they play the best teams in the country night after night. So they will... I mean, they will become a better team just by playing teams like this. So they're they're not afraid of Washington, and it's not like they haven't seen play like that on the other side of the net. Van Sant right now with a double-double. 11 kills for her, 10 digs. So when we talk about them playing the best competition, 5-16 and 16 in the Pac-12, but you're playing the best teams in the country, as you said, Carolyn, week in and week out. Kaylee Nelson. Oh, Markanovich tried to poke that one over, and that'll fall back down as Washington draws within three. Kaylee's teammates really giving her an extra hug. She's one of the newer girls on the court, so you like to celebrate that stuff. A freshman from Salem, Oregon. And a rotation error on Arizona State. A free point for Washington. Huge free point that Washington didn't have to work for. That is a mental mistake. What exactly is a rotation error, though? Yeah, so in rotation, you're not allowed to be on the right or the left of the girls that are right next to you. You need to be right in between them. It's a, it's a very odd rule, but as Arizona State takes a timeout, we'll talk about it a little more when we come back here on UW-TV. Welcome back to Alaska Airlines Arena. The Huskies clawing back into this one. They were down eight at 22-14. They have six straight points back to 22-20. Van Sant 
with the serve. Markanovic, and that one's off of Van Sant's hands and out. So Arizona State's going to have the serve up 23-20. The margin is so close right now at 23-20 that this is really a place where the Huskies need a point here. Orlandini gets that one. Sanders sets up Nelson. Arizona State will handle that one. They're just going to send it back over, though, from Murphy. Orlandini. Now Sanders. Ross near side off the block, and that'll find some open real estate and a point for Washington. An important one there because they get the serve back. And Kaylee Nelson is back to serve. A little bit of pressure for the freshman. This is where you. Just tell yourself, I do this every day in practice and do the exact same thing. Markanovich sends that one down at Van Sant's feet, and the Sun Devils have set point in set number four. 24-21. Sanders to Munoz. Good save from Tui, OT Mariner. Now Castle with that one sent right back the other way. Lauren Barfield with the block again. And Washington will have the serve down 24-22. It'll still be set point for Arizona State. I cannot tell you how huge that blocking has been. It's as if they're making me eat my words for saying that blocking <laughs> doesn't correlate to winning because it is helping them this game. 19 blocks on the day for Washington. Oh my goodness, Van Sant's gonna have to hustle back for that and they save it. That one blocked, Munoz handles it, Van Sant, that one's gonna go wild and fall and Arizona State will take set five, four and we will go to set number Five. We will need all five for this one, and when we come back, we'll have the start of it here on UWTV. Welcome back to Alaska Airlines Arena. Take another look at the statistics. Arizona State, we talked about their good defense, 71 digs on the evening. Washington, though, with 19 blocks. Both teams not hitting as well as you might like, and those service errors up there, but the aces, luckily, for both of them are up there as well. As we go into set number five, the five and 16, one and 11 in Pac-12 conference play, 
Sun Devils have taken the number 10 Washington Huskies to set five here at Alaska Airlines Arena. As the clock counts down, take a three minute timeout between those sets and teams both, both teams back out there early as is common in volleyball. Carolyn Farney, I'm Michael Preston and kind of uncharted territory for Washington. They haven't played a five set match all year and we certainly weren't expecting it tonight. After four sets, there's not a lot to say in the huddle that you haven't said already. Both teams know what they need to do. It's just a matter of who's going to actually execute it in the fifth game. So we play to 15 here in the fifth set. Got to win by two still, and the teams will switch sides after the first team to score eight. That one is wide, so Washington's off to a good start. Each point kind of amplified here in set five as we only go to 15. Nelson with another good serve there, and that one falls back over, and no one's there for Washington. That was a great opportunity to put Arizona State on their heels. Wilson now in the backcourt. And that one's right into the net, so they give it right back to Washington. So the points are amplified, the mistakes are also amplified. How many five set games did you play at Washington, and how much more intense is set number five? It goes so fast, set number five, and momentum changes are just so critical, because if you get down, you don't have as much as many points to build back that lead. Great defense by Washington there, right into the block, but that fell on the Washington side of the net. I had a hard time telling which side that fell on from up here. 2-2, two -two, tied up in set five. So that set two victory for Arizona State was their first set win here in Seattle since 2003. Doubled up that total here. That one is in, and Kylan Munoz is objecting vehemently to that. But the Sun Devils get the point. It's 3-2. Looked close. Ross right into the block. Arizona State will save that. Tuioti Mariner sends it back over. Now Rowling gets the kill. Her 10th on the night. She has a double-double, 10 kills and 10 blocks for the senior from Linwood. 11 kills for Van Sant. That's the lead for Washington. 16 for Castle on ASU side. And right into the net. So ASU gives up a free point on that one. And it's 4-3 Washington. hand of Van Sant. She hit that one with authority. Wanted to make sure she got the point on that one. Ross back to serve. Floating that one. Nogueres back to Van Sant. Ride the hot hand a little bit on that one. This one will stay alive. Four hits. It's going to be called and the up the up umpire, or the referee here is saying Bianca Roland touched it. They're saying it went off of Jenny, off of Bianca, which would have indicated <coughs> that fourth touch. Pretty loud inside Alaska Airlines Arena. As you would expect it to be rolling. Gets that one to the backcourt, but Preach able to handle it. And Castle right into the block, and that one will fall down right between Tuioti Mariner and Castle, and the Huskies have a two-point lead. Orlandini here in the backcourt to serve. 
Good block from Washington, and Van Sant actually reached under the net and poked it. She knew that was going to fall out, so she just tried to poke it right back over and a point for Arizona State. Six five Washington. Oh, that one tipped off the net. And Arizona State gets the point. It's the second or third time that's happened that Washington's just gotten unlucky. Van Sant into the block. Arizona State will handle it. Now over to Castle, far side. That's wide, and it didn't touch the block. So the Huskies up 1.76. Washington's able to get this point. The teams will switch sides. Here is Sanders back to serve. Castle pokes it over, but Sanders is there. Little miss hit there. Orlandini gets it up to Van Sant. Off the blocking hands and out of play. And the teams will switch sides. A quick minute and 15. I believe they take a quick no, no timeout here, so we'll just go straight back to playing, but the benches also switch sides. Gabby Parker hasn't been in the game for a while. Kind of wondering after we saw her so much in the first few sets why we're maybe not seeing her here later in set four and definitely in set five. Sure, Kaylee Nelson taking her place on the court there. Gabby Parker having a ton of fire for this team. But Kaylee Nelson bringing a steadiness, especially on the serve. And as good as this UW team is blocking, missing a serve is really deadly because even if it's an easier serve that they pass up, I mean, there's a good chance our block is going to get it, especially at 20 blocks for the night to Arizona State's five. That is an awful lot. They are up 8-6 here in set five. We'll go to 15. An awfully close one. Matter of fact, the last time this team had 20 or more blocks was against Missouri back on November the 30th of 2007. They had 22 and a half in that five set win. Teams will come back out. Washington will have the serve here. Sanders is back to serve for the Dogs. Sends that one over. And there's Wilson. Now Van Sant for the Huskies. Good dig by Preach. Wilson able to keep it alive. Castle sends it back over. Ross gets her paws on that one. Now here's Kaylee Nelson who pokes it back over. Easily handled by Arizona State. And Wilson rises up and kills that one. And a point coming back to the Sun Devils. Teslovich back to serve for the Sun Devils. 8-7 here in set five. Barfield pokes it over. That doesn't work. Castle's ready for it. Now Wilson far side. Orlandini will get that one. She'll send it up to Kaylee Nelson off the block into the backcourt. Sanders going to set up Van Sant. Dug out by Teslovich. Castle's just got to push that one back over. Sanders got her right arm on it, and that one's going to fall down on the UW side, and it's 8-8. They are scratching for every point right here. First to 15. Both sides staying aggressive is really important. Van Sant gets a kill with authority on that one. Cross court into the Arizona State backcourt. And that is a good momentum changer for Washington. There's Van Sant back to serve now. Wow, what power there from Wilson. She's done that a couple of times tonight. We had one earlier in the second second. Audible gasp from everyone in the arena. 
And now it's tied up again at nine apiece. Barfield pokes that one back over. And that one off the block, and Arizona State's out ahead now, 10-9. to nine. And a timeout's going to be called by Washington. We will take a break. Washington down a point here in set five to Arizona State when we come back on UW-TV. Welcome back to Alaska Airlines Arena. Huskies down 10-9 in set five. We only played a 15 in the fifth set though, Carolyn Farney. Yeah, it's always been that way, that the fifth of the, the odd numbered sets to figure out the victor is a less amount of points. But they definitely, that court switch that you see halfway po at the mm -hmm. halfway point is really important because you want to give both sides equal advantage on both sides of the net. Kelly Holford's in for the first time tonight to serve. We have not seen her before this. Jim McLaughlin might want her steady hand here. Good block by Washington. They'll give to Eoti Mariner another chance. Van Sant handles that. Now over to Munoz from Sanders. Van Sant again. Sanders going to give Munoz another chance. That one is long. The Sun Devils now up one, 11-10. You like to see them aggressive at this point, but it just makes you nervous when you get down to the line in the fifth set. Wilson back to serve. Orlandini barely digs that one out. Here's Ross on the near side. That one's handled by the Sun Devils. Oh, right off the noggin of Markanovich. Second time tonight that's happened to her. And a point for Washington. 11-11. Nogueras back into the game to serve. Good dig on that one from Arizona State. Munoz right into the block. Van Sant can handle that one. Now Munoz going to put it back over. She's actually able to get a little muster behind that one. Roland bounces that one right back into the block. Van Sant with it. And Roland missed that one, and Munoz is back there. Everybody gasped inside there, and a free point for Washington. And that one gets put right back into the net. And they're now up 12 to 11. And a timeout will be called by Arizona State. And we will take another break. A stressful fifth set here in Alaska Airlines Arena. Washington will be up 12-11 when we come back.
25 25-14, 22-25, 22-25, and 12-11 here in set five for Washington. First five set match all season. McGuinness is back to serve. Arizona State, this one's gonna be difficult to handle and they're just gonna have to send it back over. Miscommunication there between Teslovich and Tuioti Mariner. But they get it back over. Here's Tuioti Mariner again into the block. Give her a second chance again. Down the line, but tipped by the Washington block, and it's 12-12. Both sides swinging so aggressively now. All this hard work all night, and it's a game to three. Munoz, that one's off the block and out. It's 13-12, Huskies with a one-point advantage. Ross is in the backcourt back to serve. And Arizona State will take a timeout here. They'll use their last one of the set. We'll stay right here as Washington doing some work at the net tonight, up 21 to 5 on that blocking advantage. Coach Sark shares the inside scoop on the Huskies' opponents, past and future, in his weekly address to the media every Monday at noon and 6.30 p.m. You can get the inside track on his calls from last week's game and find out which players will be ready to shine on Saturday. Watch straight from Sark only on UWTV Channel 27. That's an awfully good football team this year, too. Well on their way to a bowl game for the second straight season. The Huskies in the middle of a pretty, pretty good battle here with Arizona State. 13-12 in set five. First five set match they played all year. Washington came into the match 16 and four, eight and four in the Pac-12. Arizona State at just five and 16, one and 11 in conference play. Ross is back to serve. Once again, first to 15. Got to win by two. Ross gets the go ahead. And that one pushed along a little bit too much on that one from Terhune. And this is set and match point for Washington. Summer Ross is back to serve. Taps that one over, almost falls in. Munoz. And that one's into the net. And Arizona State picks up a point. So it's still set and match point here for Washington. As Castle comes back in for Arizona State, there's Sniper, so they're looking to her probably. If they can get this one back, they gotta be looking to her. She has 17 kills on the night. See if Washington can end it here, rolling into the block. And they do look to Castle. Not set up well on that one. And Nogueres lets that one go, and that is Vance San who's able to save that one. Far side, it's long, it didn't touch the block, and Washington escapes with its fifth set victory over Arizona State, 25-20, 22-25, 25-14, 22-25, and 15-13. Washington wins sets one, three, and five. Take a look at the final point again. Van Sant, what a great save to keep that point alive. And that one is long, and Washington escapes a big upset, what would have been a big upset, at the hands of Arizona State, to be sure. Coach Jim McLaughlin heading back to the locker room. Bianca Rowland had a great, great evening for Washington. Ten kills and a whole number of blocks as well. Can't quite see it on my stat monitor, but I believe that is 12 blocks, certainly a season and career high. And now toss it down to Carolyn Farney, who has Bianca Rowland. On the floor here with senior, one of the team captains, Bianca Rowland. Bianca, the blocking tonight was phenomenal. And most of the time when you look at the blocking stat, it doesn't necessarily tell you one. 
but how did that play into tonight's game? Um, I think it felt good. We've been working on blocking in practice all week. Um, we just had it low and over, and it just felt good. I think it definitely helped us with the outcome of the game tonight. Awesome. Hey, a fifth set victory. What does that do for the confidence of your team? I think it helps us out because I, we haven't won a fifth game set yet, I don't think. So it just boosts our confidence. We know that we can pull it out, but we also need to get back to the gym and work on stuff because we shouldn't be going to five games like that. Awesome. Thanks. Back to you, Michael. Thank you very much, Carolyn. A good point there from Bianca Roland against a team that was just 1-11 in conference all year. They certainly think it shouldn't have taken them five sets, but it did. 10 kills, 11 blocks on the evening for Bianca Rowland. A great night for her. We will see you next time. A Washington victory. It took them five sets to do it for the entire crew and Carolyn Farney. I'm Michael Preston. Another look at that final set again as we say goodnight from Alaska Airlines Arena.